Coming up on 5-Minute News. Trump attorney surrenders on charges in Georgia election subversion. Witness in classified documents case retracts false testimony. And climate change doubled the chance of Canada fires. It's Wednesday, August 23. I'm Anthony Davis. The MAGA Republican attorney John Eastman, who pushed a plan to keep Donald Trump in power, turned himself into authorities yesterday on charges in the Georgia case, alleging an illegal plot to overturn the disgraced former president's 2020 election loss. Eastman was booked at the Fulton County Jail and is expected to have an arraignment in the coming weeks in the sprawling racketeering case. He was indicted last week alongside Trump and 17 others who were accused by District Attorney Forney Willis of scheming to subvert the will of Georgia voters in a desperate bid to keep Joe Biden out of the White House. It was the fourth criminal case brought against Donald Trump. Trump, whose bond was set at $200,000, has said he will surrender to authorities in Fulton County on Thursday. His bond conditions prohibit him from intimidating co-defendants, witnesses or victims in the case, including on social media. He has a history of assailing the prosecutors leading the cases against him, including Willis. Eastman said in a statement provided by his lawyers that he was surrendering to an indictment that should never have been brought. He criticised the indictment for targeting attorneys for their zealous advocacy on behalf of their clients and said that each of the 19 defendants was entitled to rely on the advice of lawyers and past legal precedent to challenge the results of the election. A witness in the criminal case against Donald Trump over the hoarding of classified documents retracted prior false testimony after switching lawyers last month and provided new information that implicated the disgraced former president, the Justice Department announced yesterday. The new information from the witness, a Trump staffer identified only as the Director of Information Technology at Mar-a-Lago, was presented to prosecutors weeks before Special Counsel Jack Smith secured an updated indictment, accusing Trump and two others in a plot to delete surveillance video at the Florida property. Prosecutors said in a court filing yesterday that the witness told a grand jury in Washington in March that he could not recall any conversations about the security footage. But in July, after being advised by prosecutors that he was a target of the investigation and after being advised that his lawyers might have a conflict of interest because of his representation of others in the probe, the witness received a new attorney from the Federal Defender's Office and provided the Justice Department with information that helped form the basis of the revised indictment against Trump, his valet Walt Norta, and a third defendant, Carlos de Oliveira, the court filing says. Prosecutors described the witness interaction in a filing that seeks a hearing in Florida about potential conflicts of interest involving the defence lawyer Stanley Woodward, who also represents Norta. They said that encounter helps explain why they continue to use a grand jury in Washington to investigate potential false statements in the district even after they had secured an indictment in Florida where Mar-a-Lago is located. The target letter to Trump employee 4 crystallised a conflict of interest arising from Mr Woodward's concurrent representation of Trump employee 4 and Norta, prosecutors wrote. Advising Trump employee 4 to correct his sworn testimony would result in testimony incriminating Mr Woodward's other client, Norta, but permitting Trump employee 4's false testimony to stand uncorrected would leave Trump employee 4 exposed to criminal charges for perjury, they said. Climate change more than doubled the chances of the hot, dry weather that helped fuel the unprecedented wildfire season in eastern Canada that's driven thousands from their homes and blanketed parts of the US with choking smoke, according to an analysis released yesterday. 
What's more, human-caused climate change made the fire season in Quebec from May through July 50% more intense than it otherwise would have been and increased the likelihood of similar severe fire seasons at least sevenfold, researchers said. The biggest takeaway is this is because of us that we have seen so many fires this year due to greenhouse gas emissions, said Jan Bulanga, a research scientist in forest ecology for Natural Resources Canada. He was one of 16 researchers who collaborated on the analysis for World Weather Attribution, an initiative that aims to quickly evaluate the role of climate change in the aftermath of extreme weather events. Canada is in the middle of its worst wildfire season on record, with more than 5,800 fires burning over 59,000 square miles from one end of the country to the other. In Quebec alone, more than 20,000 square miles has burned so far this year, an area 176 times larger than all of last year. Though the analysis looked only at a region of Quebec, hot temperatures and drought conditions were also at a record level in the rest of Canada. Ongoing wildfires have burned dozens of structures in a resort area of British Columbia and prompted authorities to evacuate about 20,000 people from Yellowknife, the capital of the Northwest Territories. The analysis estimated the peak intensity of the fire weather by looking at real-world observations in a metric called the Fire Weather Index, which estimates wildfire risk by combining temperature, wind speed, humidity and precipitation, averaged over seven days. The researchers then compared that to a world without climate change using multiple computer simulations and historical weather data a technique widely accepted in the scientific community. They found that the fire weather conditions this year were twice as likely. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate, delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.